Ever wanted to make a massive, huge, ginormous, mega asset pack? Well, here are some important tips that I learned whilst making this rather large fantasy castle pack. So I made this castle pack recently, not by myself, I may add, I did have help. It's got loads of modular pieces, so the pieces that make up the castle, lots of props, different characters that go with the castle. Then there's adventurer characters, lots of different foliage, village houses, even siege equipment in there too. So it's quite fun just thinking of the different things to go in it, let alone making them. Whilst the models themselves are relatively simplistic, it's got that low poly style, it surprised me how big an undertaking making a pack like this can be. So if you fancy making even a small asset pack by yourself, here are some key tips that I learned. Incidentally, if you don't want to go through the hassle of making your own pack, then this one is on sale at the moment for only $50. And you get something like over 700 different assets, so check out the link in the description if that interests you, and let me know what you think of the art style. I'd love to get some feedback and know your thoughts. Anyway, I'll take you to Blender for tip number one. Okay, so I call this tip number one, but it's kind of three tips within one. It relates to origins, overlapping objects, and snapping. So let's take this tree, for example, and you can see the object origin is at the base of the object. I'll isolate that and go into front view, and you can see that. For the most part, you'll want your object origins to be at the base. That way the user can scale them up and down nice and easily to change the size of that object if necessary. The other reason to have it at the base of your object, with snapping turned on, if I press G to grab, you can see that that snaps to the floor nicely and I can duplicate this. So Shift D to duplicate, maybe R, Z to make it look a little bit different. You can see that it's snapping to that object origin at the bottom just there. Now you'll notice this object origin isn't right at the base. That's because of tip number two, which is allowing for some overlap. So this is quite a lot of overlap, and that's to make sure that if there was a very steep slope here, this would still dig in without having to make too many adjustments. If I had a complex root system, then I'd have to be a little bit more precise with where I put the origin, and therefore the person placing the object would have to be a little bit more precise as well. But allowing for a little bit of overlap makes building the scenes much easier. Let's actually look at a bit of the castle wall now. You can see I've allowed for a fair bit of overlap here, that's mainly due to the style of this asset pack. It's got that sort of chunky, crooked, quirky, stylized feel. So there's not that many straight lines, it's quite crooked. So I have to allow for a little bit more overlap to make sure the objects connect together in a sensible way. So tip number one, two, and three, origins, snapping, and overlap. Thinking carefully about your object origins to allow for a little bit of overlap and snapping. That will make it easier for the user when they're building their scenes. Make sure you get that right early on because often you'll take an asset such as this wall, adapt it slightly, and then you don't need to keep moving the object origin when you do that. So tip number four then is naming. I'll open up my outliner and you can see all the names of the buildings here. It's really important that you set this out early on because you do not want to be renaming objects once you've built them. If you've got a team, make sure they're all using the same naming conventions. And you may even want a code for the different artists within your assets. Then you know exactly who built what, and it's easy to go back to them if there are any faults. Try and be well organized, put things into collection, make notes on what's been built and what it can go with and what it can be joined with. Getting those things sorted early on will save you loads of time. Tip number five, no single-sided objects. Take this plane, for example. If I go up to my overlays and turn on face orientation, anything in blue is absolutely fine, but this side is all in red. That makes a big difference when you take this into a game engine. This will be completely see-through from this side. It's very tempting to build up houses and things with single-sided objects like this, but if you go inside the house, or if you're at ground level looking up at a roof or something like that, it will suddenly disappear. There's an easy fix for this. In the modifiers, you can add modifier solidify, and make sure that all your objects have some sort of thickness like this. Yes, it does add faces, but it's easier than adding double-sided materials in your game engine. And closely related is tip number six, checking your normals. So whilst building your objects, regularly check your face orientation and make sure that there's no red. If we take this object, for example, and flip the normals to the inside by pressing Shift N, you can see that it's all red. And again, that will be invisible in the engine. I press Shift N again, and that flips them the other way. So selecting the offending faces and pressing Shift N in edit mode, of course, will solve those problems. But just be regularly checking that and make sure you haven't got any red on your objects. If you have, flip the normals. Now the next tip is about working in a team. It's often the case if you're doing a very big asset pack that you'll need to bring other artists on board. 
Regular communication is absolutely key. So regular feedback and reviews will help you catch problems early on. Having a clear art style with lots of references and lots of details about color palettes are going to be all important. If you're looking for work in these sort of teams, ask lots of questions about just those things, color palettes, art style, and try and get back lots of feedback from the art director early on so you don't waste any of your time. My next tip is about making characters. For the most part, the research that we undertook showed that most asset packs don't come with rigged and animated characters. It's something we'd like to do in the future, but there is a reason for that. Animators and their animations are fairly expensive. They can often be quite bespoke to certain characters. Going from different programs with your character rigs, so let's say Blender to Unity or Blender to Unreal, is quite an awkward process. And for the most part, something like Mixamo is the easiest way to go. Most users will take these characters put them into Mixamo, and those animations will work quite nicely in their game engine. There are certain aspects to characters, like capes, for example, that ideally you want to make as separate objects so they can be separated out for easy rigging and animation. Someone that's doing their own animation might like the cape because they're not too difficult to animate, but if you're taking it into Mixamo or something like that, it's easier to have something without capes. Characters like the Queen has a dress which can be a little bit awkward and kind of sagging clothes like this. Again, they're a little bit awkward to rig, so it's much easier to go for a style that doesn't incorporate long dresses or frilly clothing. There's other obvious points about making characters, making sure you have a standard height and all the artists know about that. And it's helpful to give out a base mesh as a starting point so all the characters are the same size. The last point I would say is to test things early in the game engine. With big packs, you really need to find out any issues you're going to have nice and quickly because they end up compounding and you end up dealing with a big mess if you leave it too late. And that, to be fair, is probably the most important thing that I've learned from this entire process. So there we have it. Those are probably the most major things that I learned whilst making this castle pack. Let me know of any thoughts or feedback you might have or any ideas. I'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.